sock it away or listen even in this time there are people who are in better shape than others and are um you know spending their money frivolously as is their want whatever i'm not telling you what you've got to do with it but we're just making it available to you so closer to 5 30 and then 6 30 before we get out of here and the cory roddick experience starts up if you listen to this show on iHeartRadio, by the way from outside of ohio uh, tell me where you do that. People go, what is a bureau chief, Alan? Well, it's just an old uh, news term that I enjoy. And it's just people who are listening to the show and they're repping their city from whatever state they're in. Like Mike is a new bureau chief in Newton, Mississippi. I don't even know where that is. Dustin is in Columbia, South Carolina. Mike's in Livonia, Michigan. I know where that is. Um, Noah is in North for sales. That's southeast of Pittsburgh. Denise is in Vegas. Gulp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dustin is in... That's Dustin who calls us, I think, down there mm-hmm. in Pendergrass, Georgia. Alana is in Dover, New Hampshire. So, Get the you know. hell out and go to Home Depot. Go to Home Depot. I'm tired of hearing Mary go boo-hoo-hoo. I can't get high alone. I miss my friends. Well, hell. Hellfire. I like hellfire. That was my favorite part. Well, hellfire. I want to stuff down here in Georgia again. I, I just want to say Mary is driving me nuts. <laughs> talking about how hard it is staying at home. I can't see my friends. I can't get high by myself. Hellfire, man. Go down there to Home Depot. Go to Lowe's. Go to Target. Go to Walmart. Hellfire, Hellfire man. man. Hellfire. <laughs> I did get a sad letter from Amber. Um, she said, my family and I had to say goodbye to our 15-year-old family dog, Murphy. Oh. I'm glad that the word dog came there. One of the hardest things I'll ever have to do. She was kind enough to send me a photo. A very handsome German shepherd, I think. There's no way to express how incredible he was a family member. We enjoyed listening to your show daily, and continuing to listen has really helped during the mourning process. Mm. It's the worst. I Just... wanted to say sincerely, I appreciate you guys for all that you do. Also, Goodfellas is gospel. Mm. Hate the show, Amber. We just had to put down my dog Charlie. I heard about yeah, that. That's a bummer. That he sucks, boy. Putting a the dog tumor down. like on his heart, and, like yeah. there's nothing you could really do about it. So tumor on the heart, like right by his heart, and it would like cause him to pass out. And it was like oh, no. he was, you know, getting up there. He's almost 13 years old. So we had to make that decision and put him down. And it just ugh, really bummed me out. Yeah. Yeah. People, well, that's a real bummer. Mm-hmm. People mourn their animals more than they mourn humans sometimes. Because humans suck. Well, no, people are mean and rude and terrible. No, Charlie was mean and terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he was but, a little jerk, but he was great. He's always hiding it. your prescriptions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's fun. Like that dog. Just a little weird uh, Shih Tzu Jack Aww, Russell Terrier he's mix. He's tiny. Yeah, he was a little dog. Oh, the little ones is what get me. It's sadder when it's a big, uh, small dog than a big dog? Yeah, it's uh, like when a hot person dies. You know that. that. Is, it's quantifiably worse when a hot person. <laughs> but that's just numerical. <laughs> There are exponentially fewer hot people. So when we lose one of them, it hurts all of us. It's a bigger hole. It hurts the, the, the herd immunity. It hurts uh, collectively the gene pool. Uh, smaller versus bigger dog, that's merely a personal choice. Why is it because they're cuter, they're tinier, they seem more defenseless? What is it? I think so. Like it's just, it, They just seem like more innocent. The fact that Easier to bury. Some, that's a silver lining. Hey! Sure. My parents have chihuahuas, right? One of those dogs goes down. It hasn't happened yet. But when one of those dogs want to get goes, like stolen by a coyote or something? Yeah, something yeah. like that. She let the door open and ran mm-hmm. off. Uh, you know uh, how much stolen. your dogs love you? Yeah. Stolen. stolen by a coyote. Probably. Oh, yeah. They're over between the feral cats and the coyotes. Chicago's being overrun. I, I have no doubt in my mind that their former chihuahua was spirited off by a wayward coyote. I picture like a coyote on its hind legs with a ski mask and a bindle. And it, like, and a bindle. And it creeps up and puts the dog in there and steals it away in the night. I don't know that that didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know how l- limber uh, these coyotes are. I just know that for a long time after that, my mom would go out for her nightly jog or whatever and hoping to either see the dog or further down the road, figuratively speaking, hoping that she would at least know if, like, the dog's remains were somewhere. Yeah. But it's still a question mark what happened to that dog. All three of my childhood dogs are dead. 
it's sad. Well, yeah, you haven't been a child for a long time, so it tracks that those dogs just, would be I, dead. I, I think I got them around like nine or ten, and we had three. And I didn't get my first dog till I was 21. And uh, I still have yet to deal directly with losing a dog. Yikes. Because your dog that you got then was with your ex-wife? Went with the gr- no, went with the oh, girlfriend with the at girlfriend. the time. Okay. And the dog the that the I got with my ex-wife has yeah. since been put down. Yeah. Sophie, but she, I wasn't there for that. Mm-hmm. She and my kids were there for that. So our dog now, my dog with Gwen, Juno, I mean, she turned nine in February. I don't know how long Aussies live. Uh, I, we probably yeah, don't like have it. 15 we, or so. There I you think, go. Yeah. We, we don't, it's not like we have another 10 years with her. Uh, so that will be the first dog that I will have to directly deal with, my either ch- putting down or her dying. My childhood dog. They he actually got injured and then had to be put down while I was in the Philippines. His name was Willie. Willie the was, dog. Yeah, he was cute. Willie. What kind of dog? He was a mini uh, Sheltie. So he looked like a little tiny lassie. Oh, he okay. He was so cute. Uh, but then there was also my dog Nick that we put down a few years ago, and I was there for that one. Like we were. Is that the super esophagus dog? Yeah, mega, mega esophagus. esophagus. And that one, that one probably hurt more because with Charlie, I knew it was coming a little bit longer, and I wasn't there, and you couldn't even go into the animal hospital anyway because they're not letting people in. Oh, so I they would about just that. take them in, and then that's that. <clears throat> oh, so yeah. like I got to say, yeah, say I went over and saw him and, and said my goodbyes. But for Nick, I was holding him. Yeah. When he went, and that was. Oof. That I'm not looking. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I don't know I'm not I looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. I think about that with the cat too, where I'm just eh, like, cats, whatever. Yeah, cats um, well, listen, Ellen's uh, um, dismissing my beliefs. If anybody <laughs> wants to do their bingo card, if you're doing your bingo cards <laughs> on, uh, yeah, it's not that I'm dismissing your beliefs. I believe that cats are good. I'm just countering with a fact. <laughs> yeah, whatever is what I'm doing. Yeah, but I was like, because I've never had a pet on my own before. I mean, my my childhood dog died when I was still pretty young. I was like maybe ten when my dog died, and uh, haven't really had. But one that's since. young enough to remember. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't really had one since. And he you died re- like of natural causes, like he was old. And your family you know, didn't replace that dog. No, I never really? got another pet. Huh. And then, well, when I lived with my dad, I only lived with my dad for a few years while he had his dog, and then I was away at college when, di- you know what I mean? So yeah. I was never like, this is the first pet that I've had that I've taken care of that I see every day, you know? When, a couple of years ago, we went on vacation, and it was when I was with a, a different girlfriend, and her cat died while we were gone. Oh, okay. no. So we got home, <laughs> and the cat was and dead, the and I had to... House. Uh, well, like, the cat died while we were gone, but her sister was there, so they took care of it. Okay. But, like, it was one of those things where she was a wreck because it was a cat that she had for a long time. I had my cat five years, yeah. She she had this cat for, like, 18 years. That's way long. Like, drew from her childhood to adulthood. Mm. Uh, Her daughter loved it, and the cat passed away while she was gone, and it was just so tragic. I was always so worried about that, is that, like, I'll go on the road, and I'll come back after 17 days, and my cat will be dead. And I'm like, what the hell, man? Like, you couldn't even, Hmm. what are you doing? You're just laying there? No, finish that. Couldn't even what? Wait for you to get home to die? Yeah, I couldn't even say goodbye. (laughs) You couldn't even wait for me to get home to die. You selfish bitch. You know, that's what I said to my grandma. (laughs) Couldn't even wait? Grandma, come on. But Would you rather come Couldn't hear me because she was dead. Would you rather come home from a trip and your animal be dead, or would you rather be there for it? I came home from a trip and another time, and uh, an animal was injured to the point where I had to take her to be put down. So I'm saying, which would you rather have? Uh, I'd rather they be dead than have to come home to a crying cat that all my kids saw. Yeah, Yeah, that's terrible. I came home from Salt Lake City one year, and my marriage was dead. Does that count? Yeah, well, you saw that coming. There are a few things happening <laughs> in that direction. I mean, yeah. of all the people in that situation. Yeah. You may never know the day or the hour. Uh, let me give you some money here. I got uh, $1,000 for you to do with whatever you need or want. Good luck. Rover's Morning Glory wants to help with a chance at $1,000. We have your shot at a grand right now. Text the nationwide keyword CASH, C-A-S-H, to 200-200. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's CASH to 200-200. Good luck from 100.7 WMMS.
Well, I hope you're ready to feel good because my screen is starting to fill up with dead dog stories. Oh, wonderful. Hey. Let's... Whoa. Hi, oh. Hey, you started this whole thing with the letter that you read. Amber wrote me a letter, Bill. You didn't have to yes. read it. So you I case did case have to read it. it. <laughs> she was very, was she was very um, complimentary of all of us. <laughs> Dear Ellen. Crazy Trucker Carl is back on the phone. What's up, man? Yes, sir, Alan. How's everybody today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm out burning diesel. Yeah, where are you now? Oh, let me see. Um, I'm right by Wilson, North Carolina. Gotcha. Okay. What are you hauling? Uh, yes. Today we're hauling a uh, uh, poultry feather meal. Poultry feather meal. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm that's hungry. <laughs> that's good eating. Well, they use it for agriculture. Or uh, aquaculture feed and uh, dog and cat food. Sure, perfect timing. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're working hard, man. You're you're not seeing hours go down or anything like that. You're essential services out there. Yes, sir. I'm, Cupcake I'm, and Dino. I'm 70, 70 hours a week. Okay, good, 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 good. So um, and that's legal. I mean, that's as much as I can legally. Of course, now right now they've got the hours of service regulations. So that you can do your whole haul in one time. So, are there? Uh, do you? Is there an uptick in people trying to get their license now, or what? Well, uh, that's why. That's why I called today. Basically, was I was going to tell people um, <clears throat> that if uh, if they lose their job, then there's a, there is a company that I know of, one company that will uh, send you a bus ticket and put you up and feed you two meals a day. And pay for your uh, schooling, and in six weeks, you'll be burning diesel. Woo, I'll be behind, though. It's like Spencer Confidential. Be behind the wheel of the big rig. Yes. Look and, at that. Uh, well, right now in these times, everybody's getting laid off. Like I told you, I've got 13 emails. Uh, I've got 13. <laughs> Hello? Hey, are you okay? Did the poultry get you? <laughs> I was like, hopefully he didn't die. Yeah, oh, my God. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. I reached, I reached over to touch something. I touched the wrong button. Oh, okay. <laughs> Been there. Want to make sure you're all right. I, 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 listen, I think when it's all over for me in showbiz, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my CDL. Hang on. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to haul these highways and uh, put that hammer down, baby. Uh, my wife. Uh, would not let me be a, a truck driver, so I I built homes for many many years, and when she died, I was on the next bus to the company that I'm talking about. You had to wait that out, and then you got uh, you got your license. Yes, and wow, I mean, I've uh, wow. just been a, a great adventure. Believe me, I bet. All right, listen, I'm glad you're safe out there, Carl. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Well, Alan, can I plug the company? Because uh, believe me, uh, it, they could help a lot of different people as far as, uh, you know, to give you a place to go, a place to stay, food in your mouth. Well, go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, quickly, go ahead. CRST, Cedar Rapids Steel Transit in Iowa. CRST, okay, you got to go to Iowa for this trucker boot camp? They'll send you a, a ticket the next day. The next day. You think they would just fill a semi full of guys and then <laughs> and haul them that way, you know? How are you going to drive a truck if you don't know what it feels like to be the cargo? Should be kind of well, their opening salvo there. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. All right. Get, say it again very quickly. CRST and Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They'll, they'll take care of Okay. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Al. All right, pal. Hey, keep it up, man. You're tough, Tempo, and I got to talk about a f***ing dog dying. Listen, if Casey Kasem were half of the broadcaster we've all been led to believe that he was, he would have been able to make the transition from an up-tempo goddamn number to talking about a dog dying. That's where the rubber meets the road, my friend, in this business. He has the ability to do it. He doesn't think it's appropriate. Oh, he doesn't to do want it. to. Yes. Oh, he doesn't yeah. want to. Yes. He's holding back. Yeah. Yes, I see. He could absolutely make that transition. Well, I'd certainly like to but think so. It's not something that he thinks is appropriate. I haven't talked to Carrie Kasem in a long time. Me I used to talk either, to her. <laughs> I used to talk to her pretty frequently when we would do those Jameson junkets in mm-hmm. Dublin. I'd see her and hang out with her, and I haven't talked to her because then she got into that whole thing with the stepmom and mm-hmm. Casey dying, and it was awful. 
Should hit her up. See how she's doing. Hey, Nick in Solon, how are you? I'm I'm well. Uh, back to Casey because he was a classic. Yep, Mr. Cox, uh, for sure. Um, first time uh, hearing your show. I love it. I'm from Detroit. I'm gonna uh, get on the uh, inner interwebs as the kids are on and uh, track you. All right, thanks, brother. But I do have a dead dog story. All right. Um, as as I'm loading my golf clubs into my buddy's car, we're gonna go through Nashville, down to Biloxi, golf weekend, or week and a half-ish. Oh. Um, yeah, right. My wife and son are loading our Labrador Retriever, who was a great family dog, mm. into the car with a hot and ready because, you know, it's his last meal. And uh, they took him onto the vet, and very sad experience from what I understand. But I get a text message on my way down, which my buddy still make me tell the story. Uh, next mercy killing pet or parent is on you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not happy. Yeah, right. Next mercy killing. Mm. You're like, come on, pet. pet come on, parent. pet. Yeah. Right. No, you know parent. what? Yeah, her her father's 86 and mine's 82, so my turn's coming up. I oh, man. It's a roll of the dice, Nick. I'm, I'm with it, though. Hey, great show. All right, thank you, Love brother. Going to follow you guys. All right, be safe back in Detroit. There's uh, Nick, who's on his way back home to Detroit. Uh, hey, Corey. Hey, guys, how's it going? What's going on, Corey? Oh, just some horrible memories from my childhood. Oh, know. feel free to share them. <laughs> well, you came to the right place. <laughs> uh, one of my earliest memories, we had a Dalmatian named Speckles. I was maybe four or five. Um, I got to witness her get hit on the road by a tow truck oh. um, that was hauling a van, uh, so a lot, lot of wheels. And um, so we loaded. I don't, I don't wait, wait, my, a tow I, truck I, that was hauling a van, <laughs> so it wasn't just like one. It, it got doubled up on. Oh yeah. man, ah, I hate it. I'm turning this down. <laughs> it's a lot of tires. Uh huh. Um, mm-hmm. So we loaded them onto our favorite winter sled to take to the vet and so then the next year we got the sled out for the winter and I had to hose <gasps> off all the old dog blood oh that was my pretty cool God. Mm. um went sledding that year it was still fun and then <laughs> uh about 10 years later we had a beagle that um got put down we said our goodbyes went back out into the truck and then my dad came out carrying a trash bag which was apparently our dog inside of it they didn't uh, bury dogs there so we had to take it home and bury it ourselves. Oh, oh, Jesus. Jesus. God. So You've was, had very bad luck, Corey, mm-hmm. with animals. Yeah, Did it have a sled? What? Did it have a sled for you to put it on? <laughs> they just put it in a trash oh, bag? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's boy. terrible, man. Oh, Corey. Sorry to hear about all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to go cry before I go to work. All oh, right, no. there you go. Hey, mm-hmm. at least he's going to work. Hey. Good for Corey. You know, if you can have a cry... While you're so gainfully employed, that's a good thing. And I got another one coming, another one being put on hold. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Jeff, hello. Hey, Alan, how you doing? Good. This is Jeff out in Hudson. Hey, buddy. What's up? Dead dog story. Lay it on me. I don't want any more (laughs) (laughs) It's a dead dog Wednesday on the buzzard. (laughs) The eagle. Yeah. Well, the buzzard, you know, it circles around. uh, Carrion. Yeah. What's up? Second grade. Getting off the school bus, I go. The bus pulls away. I look across the street. My dog, German Shepherd Judy, is across the street. I call her. Gets hit by a car. Taken out, dead. Right in front of you. Yep. Judy, Judy, Judy. Second grade is a rough time to see a dead dog. Yeah. Wow, I guess so. Yeah, anything that happens when you're still in like grade school, even up until I would say. Seeing Middle a dog school. get hit by a car. Yeah, no matter what. Is, yeah, I, how old I got, you are. Kind, I honestly got kind of immune to it while I was in the Philippines because it would happen once a month. And then there was They're dinner. Just strong, like stray dogs everywhere, and they drive crazy over there. So once a month, you'd see a dog just get flattened. Oh. It's good eating. No. No. <laughs> no. You need a farm dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice and fat. And healthy, bo- All bo- right. Bo- you too, Jeff. Thank you. There's Jeff out in Hudson who checks in quite frequently. Wow, all right. Where do you go from there? You just go to the break. Hey, Netflix <laughs> dog is a joke tweet out. Uh, you're, you want to know the name of your Netflix special? Oh, oh This sure. is a nice little quick thing we could do before we go to break. Sure. Uh, your last text that you sent is the name of your special. So mine is Woohoo! 
Um. Okay. Wait. What? Mine is high. <laughs> Alan Cox. Hi. 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 Mine is. I know you're a little uncomfortable, but this will be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Mary is the winner. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pound cake. He's on the phone. He's on the phone. <laughs> the phone he's supposed to be on. Yeah. Good. All right. That's a long one, but it works. That's a great title, though. I know you're a little uncomfortable, but this will be good. Mm-hmm. And Well, that's the first sentence. The next sentence is, I promise. So, <laughs> Either one of those works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, hey. <laughs> and if you want to go home after I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I wow, you've, God, that's you've got your first is. three comedy hours <laughs> ready to title. Hey, Vinny. Yeah, what's up, man? How are you, Vinny? I'm a truck driver. Yay for me. Yay mm-hmm. for you. Thanks, Vinny. Yeah, well, I'm the guy that brings your food and everything else. So. That's what I'm saying. Well, Thank we're you. appreciative of that. Yeah, I know. I know. I appreciate it, too. I get to keep working. When they say go home, man, that doesn't mean me. I stay on the road. I've been on the road since you guys started this all fun stuff. Gotcha. What's up? Well, um, I have two little min- miniature pincher dogs with me, and they go with me everywhere. Yeah. I end up keeping them with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. They're my road dogs. And a uh, year and a half ago, I ended up putting, I have to put one of them down because of uh, he had uh, kidney failure. I don't know what the hell happened, but it happens. This was while you were on the road. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I, but I had to end up bringing him home to do that. Yeah. He was sick. He was sick, and I had to put him down, and I went and picked up another one. And how's that yeah, one doing? Uh, he's doing great. He's nutty as hell, just like me. All right. Well, I had to pick up two little um, puppies for my my brother. His grandkids wanted them, and the person that took care of the puppies didn't take care of them right. They have um, a rash all over their skin, so yes, I get to take care of them for another six weeks before I bring them to him. <laughs> right. Lucky oh, you. I'm thrilled about oh, I'm so thrilled. Yeah. Then I'm having two little dogs going bonkers, and now I got four. Hey, there mm-hmm. you go. And you're up to your neck in some kind of salve, probably. Thank you. That's what I'm Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Vinny. I appreciate the call. He's out there with the road dogs and doing the thing. All right, good. I got a break. Uh, if you want to send me a text, 35192. If you don't, it's 35192. Uh, AlanCoxShow.com for everything else. We'll be back after. 